Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with today's vlog. It is now 11 o'clock on June 12th, 2018. I'm going to try this yet again. Uh, unfortunately, I'm still having a hell of a lot of problems with my uh, equipment over here. I had mentioned that ever since the Windows update happened a, little, a couple of weeks ago, it screwed up the webcam to the point where, you know, I had to restart this. Th I had to start it up, mess with it, and then restart it again just to get it to work. So I went ahead and ordered a, you know, an external webcam, hoping that would solve the problem, because obviously the Windows update just screwed everything with the drivers on this old laptop, and you know, reinstalling them, trying to update them hasn't worked. So I, I finally picked that up today because today I returned from upstate because well my kids were coming home, so I you know that was the plan. I was going to come back today. And the uh, the camera had actually been waiting for a couple of days for me because I forgot it was getting delivered on Sunday and I left before I got there. So I picked it up today in hopes that I could get it to work. And unfortunately, it still won't work, <laughs> at least not on this laptop. I have a second laptop with me that I use for when I do my recordings with Fiend Phone and stuff. And I have a two laptop and mixer set up. So I tried it out on there, too. Uh, I actually got it to work that got, I finally got that to work on Skype on the other laptop because that laptop doesn't have a camera at all. So I was able to get it to work on Skype, but the program I use to record these videos, uh, OBS, uh, which I happen to love the great free software, uh, for some reason it won't, it still won't read the, the, the new camera still won't register on OBS in on this computer. And then on the other one, uh, OBS won't I, I need to I install OBS because I don't have it on that one and unfortunately there's an some Windows updates that need to happen in order for OBS to be able to be installed and I can't update with that Windows computer that's a Windows 7 old laptop and for some reason it just won't let me update uh window like I hadn't updated Windows in a while but it won't even let me now so I can't get that OBS downloaded on there so it just seems to be like no matter what I do I just I can't get I can't win with this and uh, I've been sitting here in this parking lot for a while with where I had Wi-Fi because I, you know, I, I tried to, I had to redown, I redownloaded OBS because uh, apparently they had had an update too recently. And they said the last version was having problems with new updates. So I figured, oh, maybe that's the problem. So I sat around long enough to have that uploaded and then finally installed. And nope, that didn't fix it. So anyway, here we are. So. Uh, hopefully this one works. You know, yesterday's video, I don't know what the heck happened to it. Uh, same setup I'm using right now. I think the day before might have been a problem too, and I just didn't catch it. So I do apologize, but, you know, I'm trying to keep these coming out. And if, if I keep having issues at this point, I'm probably just going to start recording them on my all of these on my phone uh, as much as I don't like to because I do like the fact, you know, I have my microphone and my headphones with me. I like to use them because it improves the sound quality. And as we know, I'm all about the audio quality. Because, well, bad audio is a hate crime. Anyway, so, with all that being said, uh, which is, I think it's even more than I said the first time that I tried to do this. Because, yeah, on top of everything else, I finally got this to set up and work. And I went to record it. And because I, I, I downloaded the new version of OBS, I forgot that the settings, you know, the default settings start with it. And the file was an FLV file, which... You can't upload to DTube or Steam uh, to DTube. Uh, you know, it has to be an MP4 or something. And I have a program that I can, you know, convert it. Unfortunately, when I went to convert it in that program, the video just didn't show up in DTube. The audio showed up fine, but no video. So we'll try it this time and see if it finally works and I can upload it, hopefully before midnight, now that it's 11 already. Who the heck knows? Anyway, so since I last left you guys, besides all this bullshit... Uh, you know, I finished up that nice day I was having yesterday upstate, you know, enjoying the great weather and just hanging outside with the dogs. And then, uh, my buddy finally got home around five or so. And then we started drinking again, <laughs> not a lot, you know, just having a couple beers and bullshit. And then we ended up talking for hours again, uh, you know, hit me and him. And then his wife would join us every once in a while and we'd have more conversations. And then like, you know, to the point where we did, I don't think we started to eat dinner until like after 10 o'clock because <laughs> we were just so busy talking. And, uh, and yes, Craig, I know you're going to watch this. And despite the fact that you guys kept laughing and thinking I was full of shit, no, no, even though the food burnt, even though you burnt the ribs the first night and you managed to burn the chicken a little bit last night, it was still tasty, dude. It's still better than the 30 day food supply of food I've been living off of for the past week or so. So I was very appreciative of it. 
So, you know, so like I said, since I know you'll watch this, once again, thank you guys. You, it was great. You know, it was great to see you. It was great to hang out with you. And uh, it was really great of you to put me up for a couple of days. And hopefully I can come back soon. So we did all that. And then, uh, you know, I after they went to bed for the night, I tried to finish uh, uploading some stuff really quick. And then uh, I went to bed and I actually woke up this morning before they both left. So I got to say goodbye to them again and, you know, and, uh, and talk a little bit. And then uh, after they both cleared out of the house... My plan had been to hit the road around 11 a.m. because I figured that should put me back uh, in this area around 3-ish, which should have been just about the right time for my kids to have gotten off the plane, got their baggage, got in the car, and gotten back there. So I was trying to time it out that, you know, I'd be back right around the time they would. Unfortunately, we Murder Dog and I got a little bit delayed because uh, I had shifted a couple of things around and the... Uh, the pet barrier in the back decided to fall down as we were dry, as we were driving through the back road. So I had to stop a couple of times and try to rig that back up and figure out what was going on. And I finally got that fixed. And then we got on the road. And unfortunately, there was construction everywhere. There was a bunch of accidents everywhere. And apparently it's quota time because the road pirates were out in full force. Uh, so much so that I actually even made a Facebook post about it earlier because they were just everywhere all over the New York State throughway. And, uh, I mean, I, luckily for me, you know, I use Waze, I have the, the app, the Waze app, I have, uh, you know, cell 411 as a backup in case I need to record anything, if I get stopped for anything. And, uh, I may or may not have some type of radar detection, which, you know, I mentioned all that in that post and, you know, recommend for everybody to do the same thing. Uh, but, but, but with all that going on, obviously th things were slowed down a bit because people were constantly slowing down because of all the cops and, the, you know, traffic built up because of the construction and the accidents. So we were running a lot, you know, we were running further behind than I wanted to, which meant, unfortunately, by the time we got close to the city, we actually ended up catching the beginning of rush hour, which I was trying to avoid. And that slowed us down even more. So by the time we finally got back to Long Island and got to near where the kids are and they actually got over to see us, it wasn't until like 430, which was, you know, an hour and a half later than I planned. And, you know, since it had already been a week since I had seen them at all, you know, an extra hour and a half was, was horrible, especially because I was stuck in the car the whole time. And then, unfortunately, uh, well, I did get to see them. I got to hug both of them, and, that, you know, it felt great just to be able to touch, you know, like I said last time, I just wanted just be able to hold them, hug them, you know, like it was. I was missing that. So it felt great, you know. Um, but we met at a 7-Eleven parking lot because I needed to pick up, uh, well, more cancer sticks because it's been a stressful week. And uh, I just figured, you know, it's right down the block for their house so they could at least meet me there. And then we could figure out something because I knew I wanted to take Cameron to the dog park because she had been cooped up in the car for the past five hours. Like I let her out and we took a little quick little walk so she'd go to the bathroom when we were waiting for the girls to arrive. But I wanted her to be able to get out and not just be stuck in the car the whole time. So, you know, they said they would come, you know, they said they would come down to the dog park and, uh, and, and, and meet me. They were going to meet me there because they needed to go back to their place and because it was getting a little chilly and they wanted to get some pants. And, uh, you know, because they're wearing the pretty dresses today, of course. <laughs> um, so they were headed back to, the, to their apartment to get some pants and I was going to head down to the bar park and we were going to meet, you know, we're going to meet there and hang out for a little while. And then my plan was to, you know, as much as as much as I'm trying to save money out here, I haven't seen my kids in a week, so I was going to go out to dinner with them, so we could at least sit down and hang out for a while. And unfortunately, that never ended up materializing because it took them a while to get down there because they had some issues. I, I think one of my daughters, unfortunately, was uh, a little bit cranky, and uh, so that slowed things up. And I got down there way ahead of them and ended up taking Cameron into the dog park, and we were just hanging out waiting, and. Everything was fine until this large gentleman with a huge Rottweiler puppy showed up. And I, I love Rottweilers. I'm a big fan of Rottweilers. And I even remarked when they walked in the into the dog run, you know, I tried to start, a, you know, basically, you know, not, well, not really start a conversation, but, you know, exchange pleasantries like, oh, hey, how you doing? That's a really beautiful dog you got there. I'm a big fan of Rotties. And he kind of just like shrugged me off and like blew, like blew me off or whatever. And I was like, all right, whatever. He, maybe he's a dick. Okay, that's fine. You know, I, I didn't really pay that much mind. But, you know, in the 10 minutes that he was there, I, I noticed that he had, like, no control of this dog whatsoever because, you know, like I said, it was a huge, a huge Roddy, and he, he said he was a puppy. And, uh, you know, he's playful. He wasn't being vicious or anything, but he was, like, stomping on other dogs and, like, tackling them and be, getting kind of rough. 
and this guy like tried to stop him and the guy the dog clearly had no respect for him whatsoever didn't listen to him didn't respond to him and then he tried to take a swat at his butt in order to try to get him to to respond and like that didn't like I'm not a big fan of that tactic but that didn't work either and uh, so it was like clear this guy did not have control of this animal and m- me being a uh, canine behavioralist uh that's usually a red flag and i i people like that irritate me especially if they bring their like it's okay to have a dog and not know what you're doing and maybe seek help but if you don't seek help and you also then bring that dog out in public and they're not you're not capable of controlling them that's a recipe for disaster and so i i with that knowledge i kept like, i kept my eye on him and the dog and uh and then everything seemed to calm down a little bit, and everybody was playing relatively nicely. And at one point, I was standing somewhere in the middle of the dog park, and Cameron started to come up in front of me. So I, I started to half bend down to to pet her, but then I, I sensed that a, a pack of dogs was behind me, kind of like wrestling around and stuff like that. So I was kind of keep I was trying to pay attention to where they were too, in case one of them like clipped, you know, because they they have a tendency to like roll into your legs and you'll, they'll knock you over if you're not paying attention. So I was trying to do that, but something else caught my eye in the other direction. And when I went to turn, all of a sudden I saw the very large man going, oh, oh, watch out, watch out. And when I turned to see what he was saying, watch out for, his dog had lifted his leg and started pissing on me. Now I know that that may get a laugh from some or maybe most of you, but it was not fucking funny. Now, and I'm that's I'm somebody who's been shit on, pissed on, vomited on, bled on by so many different animals over the years. Never really had a problem with it. You know, I said for the longest time I was actually more comfortable with having that stuff coming out of uh, out of animals than I was humans up until my kids were born. Then obviously I got over that in a hurry. But so I'm not like squeamish about this stuff. But after the week I've had. And, you know, and missing my kids and going through everything and, uh, you know, and then all, you know, just and just a year I've had to like getting pissed on by somebody by somebody's dog who the guy clearly it was the guy it was the guy's fault because he just clearly didn't train his dog very well. It was just it was, you know, it was it was just the end of the line for me. And and even then I might have been all right if the guy had been actually apologetic about it or tried to, like, you know, say anything. But instead he kind of chuckled and then gave a half ass like oops sorry and i was like sorry i'm like dude really your your dog just fucking pissed on me that's not co-. and i was i was trying not to get loud or nasty i just kept i'm like dude that's that's not cool man like it's not cool you know like you think it's funny it's not cool he's like oh it happens all the time and i was like well no it doesn't happen all the time i've been here every day for 2 weeks and this has never once happened you know, except for the past couple of days, obviously, but he didn't have to know that. But, but for the most part, for the past couple of weeks, I've been there every day, multiple times a day. Never happened. I took care of dogs for years. The only time it ever happened was when it was somebody who they, they didn't train their dog very well and they had no control of their dog. And then once, you know, it happened once and the dog and I had a conversation and it never happened again. Um, but, you know, I was like, I'm like, sir, I'm like, that's a dominance thing, man. You clearly don't have control of this dog. And then he just kept running his mouth behind me as I was trying to walk away. And, uh, you know, said something stupid like, well, what am I supposed to do? Cut my dog's dick? What am I going to do? Cut my dog's dick off? I'm like, nah, dude, control your dog. I'm like, you clearly have no control. And he just kept muttering and, and, and babbling. And I was just so fed up. So I was like, you know what? I'm just, uh, whatever. I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm out of here because I'm not dealing with this. So I, I, I called for Cameron. I said, well, I'm like, let's go. We're leaving. And then he kept going. And as I was walking out, I heard him trying to remark to somebody else about, you know, making comments about me, like basically the, how this was my fault. You know, like I was trying to act so cool at the dog park. What I'm like, you know, I'm like, dude, you, you literally, your dog literally pissed on me. And like at that point, I turned around. I'm like, I'm like, listen, buddy. I'm like, I'm a canine behavioralist. I'm like, I'm telling you, your dog is ex- exer- exerting signs of dominance. And you clearly have no fucking control. And that's almost 15 years of experience telling you that. So you can you can take your snide comments and shove them, you fat fuck. And that, and I just turned around and walked out. And, uh, you know, it was, it was so frustrating because, like I said, after everything that happened, not what I needed today. To make matters worse, I had been wearing a pair of jeans. And I'm only carrying, carrying two pairs with me because, well, it's supposed to be summer-type weather right now. Unfortunately, it's just been crazy around here. So I have a lot of shorts. 
Um, but I only have two pairs of jeans, and one of them was already in the laundry bag, and I was planning on bringing the laundry in in a couple of days to do everything at once, and I figured the jeans could get me by at least another day or two, but now that they have Rottweiler piss all over them, no, they can't. So I had to get to a laundromat, because now it's almost 6 o'clock, and you know, laundromats close, most of them around 7 or 8, so I had to race over to one of those. So the kids finally showed up as I was coming out of the bathroom, and then I had to explain what happened, and... You know, like I, I ended up having to leave them because I, I had to go take care of that because otherwise I was going to have no freaking pants. Um, and with my luck, it would be freezing tomorrow and that would really suck. Um, you know, and then it just and, and then I just broke down again because like here it was. I finally get to see my kids and because they, you know, took them forever to get down there and whatever and just like anything and everything. And, you know, and, uh, and they were already tired and cranky anyway because, you know, they had had a long week and uh, apparently they had a kind of iffy plane ride back. So I, I, I figured staying around them would actually make things worse. So I just, you know, I just told I told the wife just to take them. And, uh, you know, I went off by myself for a little while and went to take care of the laundry stuff and, uh, you know, whatnot. So, so that really sucked because I've talked about this all week. I've missed the hell out of them, and all I wanted to do was see them and hang out with them, and it's like as soon as they get back right away, it's like, well, we got to go meet in a parking lot somewhere, or maybe we can go to a park again, and like you know, all the feelings from the week before where I was getting frustrated with all that too. Just came back, and yeah, not good stuff. And then I came here to, well, then I, par- you know, then like I said, I, I went to go pick up that camera after, you know, after I you know realized that, you know, it was, I was going to have to end the night without them again. I was like, fuck it, I might as well go pick up that camera and see if I can get that to work. And unfortunately, I've now spent the past couple of hours, maybe three at this point almost, trying to figure all that out um, because I've had nothing but problems there. And like I said, I now have had to record this one twice. And it was actually a lot shorter the first time around, so I apologize for that. I was trying to get a short one out today. But anyway, so that's where things are. Um, I mean, murder dog, murder dog's all right. Uh, we do have to go back to the vet tomorrow to pick up more medication for her because they decided to lower her dosage, so we have to go pick that up. Uh, she hasn't eaten that much the past couple of days, but she's prone to go through periods of that, especially with different adjustments. You know, we were in somebody else's house for a couple of days. I mean, actually, that's not true. She ate some. She ate some of their dog's food, which is I never I, I, I try to never let her do, but she managed to sneak some of that in. But, you know, she's doing good. She had fun. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, uh, you know, for the, for the end of the weekend and yesterday, it was great. You know, I had a blast hanging out with my buddy, my buddy Craig and, and his wife and just, uh, getting to be up there and it did take my mind off things a little bit. And then, you know, like I said, I woke up today with the plan and of course, well, just everything went to hell. So yeah, I mean, and, and now I don't, unfortunately, I don't even know how much I'm going to get to see my kids in the next couple of days either, because there was a bunch of things that need to get taken care of that I had to wait for them to come back for, because I need somebody to watch Cameron. And, uh, you know, so now it's like, well, if I, I, I can, I can go do the stuff I got to do and then not see them or not, or put it off and then be even a worse position because, well, now it's already the 12th and, uh, we're, uh, Next week is the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Starts on the uh, right, yeah, twenty first. Starts the, a little over a week away, and now I have to scramble to figure out if I am going to try to leave early and go all the way out to South Dakota, um, and then spend the night there. So with Murder Dog, so we can take care of that residency thing and hopefully get the driver's license and stuff, and then head back to meet them at the fest. Um. Or if I'm if we're gonna if I'm just gonna go to the fest and then go to South Dakota afterwards, or yeah, I still have to figure all that out, and I have very little time to do so. So I gotta get to I got to get to planning and uh, figure out what's gonna be best because there's also the possibility, and uh, I'm hoping again and th- again this is gonna suck because it's gonna most likely result in me being away from my kids for an extra day or so, which I don't really really don't want to do, but I do have an opportunity to go visit. A, somebody who's very important to me um, and uh, somebody I've, I've talked a bunch about in a lot of my other podcasts and stuff and I've actually had him on my I've had him on my podcast that blush of abstractions we had him on the seeds of liberty three times um, and that is of course the incomparable Ben Stone uh, the bad Quaker who uh, is a, is kind of a kind of a I don't have a lot of heroes Ben's one Ben's one of them I just Ben's somebody who helped shape the way I do activism and how I think about things uh, because I had a completely different attitude until I stumbled across some of her, his work and then because he was a Freedom Fiends co-host I was 
lucky enough to be able to get to uh, be introduced to him kind of, you know, through the fiends because the ones, you know, he was kind of retired before I became a fiend, but, you know, he listened all the time. So he knew who I was. So when I reached out to him and said, hey, would you like to be on my show? You know, I'm a huge fan of yours, obviously. You know, the first time it was great. And then we've actually struck up a, a friendship since then. And, you know, we talk, you know, we talk through Telegram and stuff. And then I finally got to meet him last year at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, which was like so exciting for me. And uh, I had actually, I had heard that he wasn't doing so great. I mean, it's it it's, it is public knowledge. He, you know, his health hasn't been the greatest over the past couple of years. That's why he's been out of the public light for the most part for the past year or so. He kind of just retired from everything. Um, and I hadn't heard from him in a bit. And then I just got a message from him like a month, like a few weeks ago, saying, you know, I had le- I had left him a message you know, a month before that. And I kind of figured that he had forgotten about the whole telegram thing. And it was just like, Oh, well, you know, so I was like, ah, if he gets it, he gets it. And he said, Oh, I just, I stumbled across this. I, you know, he said, I forgot I had this app. So I was like, I see, there you go. I figured he would, but he stumbled across. He's like, you know, I just wanted to say if, uh, if you happen to be coming this way, if you want to stop by and, uh, you know, uh, so I, I mean, that of course, you know, made me, made me feel really good. And then I was going to try to figure out how w- way to do that. And then, uh, apparently, also Shane Radliff, uh, who I, you know, I mention all the time, my my buddy Shane, who does the Vanu podcast, uh, he uh, he apparently uh, talked to him too, and Ben th- Ben said to him to Shane that uh, he thought it'd be a great idea if both of us could get down there at the same time, so we could all hang out together for a little bit, since he's not going to be able to make it to the fest this year. And, uh, you know, I'd obviously love to do that. Now, again, I don't want to be separated from my kids anymore because I just went through a week of that, but. You know, to be able to hang out with Ben for even a day or a night, um, because again, you know, he's getting older with the health. You know, who knows? I mean, anything could happen. I mean, uh, you know, getting the chance to see him would uh, would would be pretty big for me. So, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I know my kids would be invited there too, but it's going to be a whole logistics thing with how they get out there and how we get back and all that stuff. But hopefully, we could figure that out. So, may, may, I might I, I might hopefully be doing that too. Um, that would probably end up having to be on the return trip. So yeah, like I said, I don't have a lot of time, but I got to start figuring all this stuff out because the fest starts on the uh, June, June 21st, next Thursday. And I fully intended to be there by about noon on Thursday when you're first allowed to come in and start setting up your tent and stuff. Uh, I wanted to be there then because I, I definitely want to be there as long as I possibly can because, as I've talked about before, it's my favorite festival to go to. Uh, most of my my and fam shows up there, and it's great. And uh, yeah, so gots to get moving. Anyway, all right. Now I'm going to wrap this one up for like the fifteenth time tonight, <laughs> and uh, hopefully I can actually get this uploaded before midnight because now it's eleven twenty three, and I had started this a couple an hour or so ago, and I was planning to have this up, but. Hopefully I could do that, and hopefully tomorrow is a much better day because, like I said, I mean, see, yes, obviously seeing the kids today and get to hug them was huge, and, you know, after everything uh, this past week, I definitely needed that, but I didn't get to see them anywhere near as long as I need to, and, uh, you know, getting pissed on, uh, that kind of ruined things. You know, I say I used to say all the time, being pissed off is better than being pissed on, and I largely still agree with that, although today I ended up being both, and I'm not sure which I'm more unhappy about, the being pissed off or being pissed on. I think it might be equal. but So, yeah, hopefully tomorrow's a better day. Anyway, I will sign off for now. As always, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, and uh, thank you again for the continued comments, support, uh, suggestions, and all that stuff. And I have got a couple of questions, uh, a couple of uh, queries about, you know, people actually wanting to help me out in different ways and stuff like that, besides just the suggestions. Um, hey, if you're ever, you know, anybody out there feels like donating to the cause, <laughs> helping me out with this project and stuff, uh, you're more than welcome to send something my way. Uh, I usually put stuff up in the show notes. There's usually a couple of crypto, c- couple of different crypto wallets you could donate to. Uh, we do have a Patreon account for the Seeds of Liberty. So if, uh, if you like this content, you know, if you've, if, if you're not, if you don't know the Seeds of Liberty or my other podcast, Abolition of Subtractions, and you, you know, you found me through this whole, this, this whole thing that I'm doing, uh, if you want to go check those out, you know, feel free to donate to our Patreon. Most of that money eventually will come back to me anyway, since I do most of the work. Um, and, uh, of course for the people on Steam it, uh, uh, you know, since this is where all my content goes first. Um, please definitely keep hitting those hit, hit that hit that upvote button and uh, you know re-steam these every once in a while too. I wouldn't mind that. Um, you know, 
it's always nice when people re-steam my stuff rather than posting their own things about it. And then, you know, when I say do a show with somebody and then they make their own post and and point it to my link so they get all the upvotes. <coughs> Luis. <coughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, man, seriously. I yell at some of my friends all the time who actually have a lot more upvoting power than me that just don't bother to go on Steam. And I'm like, dude, come on, man. At least, you know, go on every couple of days and hook a brother up. Because if, if you're not voting for anybody else, at least give me some votes. I don't know. But yeah, if you're on Steam, it's one of the easiest ways to donate to my cause because it doesn't actually cost you anything, you know, just a little Steam power for the day. Um, but I, I do appreciate the people, especially, you know, as I mentioned before, Graham, uh, you've been great trying to help me out. I'm sorry we didn't, weren't able to hook up. I tried to, resp- I didn't get back to you early enough, I guess. I was trying to get back to you and try to figure out a time to do the recording this morning, but we never managed to hook up. So one of these days we will we will actually get to talk on one on a show, my show, your show, both of our shows. We'll do it soon, man. Um, but anyway. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get going now, but uh, thank you everybody again for watching and, uh, I will catch you tomorrow. Hopefully (laughs) this is abolitionist J peace y'all.